Welcome back to Base Camp, WNC. Today we're going to go over a little bit of irrigation problems. Well, I wanted to, got a few emails, a couple people about irrigation. Wanted to show you this. This has all been reworked. This is a drip tube. This is some heavy stuff. Um, it drip tubes about little holes about every six inches. Hopefully you can see the moisture difference between the two. This is the new plants. They're set on to go on about every two days and irrigate for a couple hours. And uh, I'll go over here and show you the bigger ones and let you see what they're doing. Well, this is the system we have here now. You can see this uh, stake right here. It sprays out about a two and a half, three foot diameter circle. Uh, we've gone to these. All these lines had these little plug-in emitters about as big around as a quarter. Um, just like the other tubes on them little ones, on the little blueberry plants, we have a problem with them always getting clogged up with ear, uh, algae. So we've gone to these fan nozzles and uh, this is just another one of these jobs that you kind of have to do. Um, when this thing comes on, somebody has to walk up and down these rows and uh, every other day or so and make sure these things are dispersing water. It's a pain, but all these little ones that just plug into the line are about as big around as a quarter. We had a horrible problem with them things getting clogged up with algae. And uh, of course they were covered in mulch to try to keep them out of the sunlight and uh, keep that black hose from getting hot and growing algae and then we found out nothing was even getting irrigation so this way you have to walk up and down the row if it's clogged up you can unclog it and get it fixed but at least you can see what's irrigating what isn't <clears throat> we're going to head out in the field show you some production areas and go over a little bit of the fertigation system Walt does have a dosmatic dosatron uh, that he has bought and purchased six, seven years ago, been sitting in the shed ever since then. But we're going to bring him into the real world and hook that up here as soon as he gets done with all the strawberries and he wants to learn something. And, uh, but we've had to go to this other system, like I said, for maintaining irrigation on the blueberries and something we can see. Part of the problems, uh, all the salesmen, everybody tells you how great this stuff is until you get it and you figure out it still has problems with it. But we're going to take you out in the field, show you the other stuff on the squash, and look, you, look at this Venturi and how it works, and uh, we'll irrigate some more stuff for you. Well, here we are. This is in the early sweet corn patch and some beans over here. And we set, they set this uh, overhead irrigation up. They cover about an 80 foot circle, about 40 foot on either side. Um, still want to get in here and be able to plow these rows of beans up here and over there. So um, we have these portable lines. Those are, uh, overhead stuff right here is actually used for frost and freeze protection over the strawberries. And the whole farm, besides having buried irrigation lines, also have these hydrants in sticking up gives you something neat to kind of run over and hit and have to fix all the time but what those are for is for the temporary overhead on the strawberries to keep frost down off of them and uh, you can lay drip tape down like every other row of corn but then it blows back and forth and gets in the way and Walter wants to be able to conventionally plow this stuff up and cultivate it, so to keep from having to move the irrigation around. Let's take you over here and show you this Venturi right now, and let's just see how this thing works. As I said, we get fertilizer delivered in this tote. Well, they split it between this end and the other one, and this is the Venturi. It, uh, we actually take the main valve on the line here, See where it is in my finger right here. Shut it all but down, shut it down about 95%. Open these valves on either end. And what that does then is draws water through. And as you can see here, 
if the larger end here goes into the smaller end it'll actually form a suction we put all the liquid fertilizer down in the bucket put this strainer down here in the bucket it will then suck all the fertilizer up one bucket at a time and goes in there um, it takes about 45 50 minutes to inject all the fertilizer in the line then we irrigate for about two hours like I said this thing will be replaced this year uh, probably when Walter goes on vacation I'm gonna stick in the dose matic and he's gonna have to learn to live with it um, we do things like that to get around him but uh, this is 906 don't really want to give you all the fertilizer recommendations because it's all based on your location but this stuff here gets about 20 gallons of it three times a week we fertilize on Monday Wednesday Friday we spoon feed it it's like the boron it gets a quart and a half per acre but that gets divided up into three applications um, all the other minerals trace minerals all the Epsom salt magnesium sulfate everything kind of like I said we go by tissue samples we take tissue samples every Monday morning send them off uh, they're about $15 a piece to get done and then it comes back Wednesday night it'll be on the web uh, where they're at we take tissue samples of plants when they're in full production they're looking good the fruits growing and we like to take some samples and then use them as our base mark this is kind of what we're after and even on this place the soil conditions will differ greatly from one field to the next but you have to have something to have a benchmark or something to go from so next year you end up being able to load your plant up to exactly what level you want when it's in full production bright looking green this way when you get a soil sample and it looks a little chloratic you'll know exactly what it's going to need to get to your level uh, we'll show you some other little things this is the cherry cherry tomato end of it and as I said we like using right here off the header line that right there is a real old simple valve if you need to you can shut certain rows off You're getting too much water or they don't have fruit but um, these are the ones I was showing you the other day that while boron was too high on the cucumber plants they're all on one irrigation line and they sure didn't hurt the tomato plants at all these right here are tall enough now the stakes are going in today they're going to start tying them up start getting it ready for it you can see down in there the blossoms are already set on it and it's making fruit already so time to pour the juice to them and keep them healthy and happy well here it is almost mother's day that'll be this coming weekend and the strawberries right there are still setting fruit still got pickings I mean last Saturday sick another 1592 buckets went out of here and as you can tell minus the weed here they're still setting blossoms they're still setting fruit they're still green berries and that blossom right here tells you there'll still be berries for another 30 days after this so we trudge on hopefully we'll have a strawberry pickings on the downhill side when the blueberries all start blueberries are just not the season here as much as strawberries for the you pickers it'll start getting warm it's getting into the 80s so blueberry pickers aren't quite as dedicated as strawberries but this brings them a, gives them a good reason to come and pick strawberries and some blueberries. So, if you like the videos or have any comments, let me know. My website's there, email address. Give me a shout, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends about it, and I'll talk to you later on.